The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN Wednesday morning, just after 9 a.m. Eastern time. We got about 30 minutes to go until the start of trading and talk about a reversal from yesterday's fortune. Market accelerates higher yesterday. Some big numbers to the upside. But just like that, you wake up this morning, market giving a lot of it back. You got the S&Ps down more than 1.5 percent right now with negative 58 points at 37.09. You look at the action in terms of where we were Friday, you had lows of 36.39. Pre-market over into Monday, Juneteenth holiday, you accelerate higher. We back things up to where we were yesterday around the open. You were trading at a price level at about 9.30 and things really just skyrocketed right out of the gate. 37.33 was where we were pre-market yesterday. You make it up to 37.83, so 50 points above where we even opened yesterday, even when we opened pretty dramatically in the positive. And then you trade off 90 from where we were last night just to the lows we made at about 4 a.m. Eastern time. Those lows below 3,700. You trade down 90 points from 3,783 to 3,693. Since then, small bounce didn't quite make it to the 382 in that index in the S&P. We're trading right now 3,708. NASDAQ 100, you're down a pretty similar 1.6% right now. The Dow's off 1.4%. Russell off 1.5%, almost the exact reversal of the type of move pre-market you had yesterday. Do we get a full acceleration to get back all of yesterday's gains? Because yesterday, coming into the pre-market, you had all the indices at about positive 1.5%. I think it was about 1.4 to 1.6%. They were in the green coming into the opening bell. They all accelerated higher. Maybe this is just the start of the pullback this morning. We're gonna find out in about 22 minutes from right now. Bitcoin. Flirting with 20,000 yet again. We were just under that number briefly at about 3 a.m. Eastern time. We're trading at 20,300. Ethereum, 1,081 this morning. And how about crude? We're going to talk to our man Teddy Kegstad at 40 past the hour. Been talking a lot of crude. Crude, one of its first real healthy pullbacks in this market. You take a look at the daily. I've been talking about this trend line. Uh, higher prices, higher highs, lower low, uh, excuse me, higher highs and higher lows was what we had been making. Quite a decisive break. You look at where we were. Remarkable. Eight days ago, crude had a 123 handle. You're looking at a 102 handle, putting it on a short-term time frame. From 116 down to almost 106 on Friday. And then yesterday's high, we were sitting at 111. You trade down to 102.07. Excuse me. little sneeze there. Uh so that's always a good conversation at 40 past the hour on Wednesdays with Teddy. We'll talk to him. We'll talk a little bit of crude. Uh, you know, we'll talk as well. Why don't we jump over to it right now, man? How about that dollar yen yesterday up to 136.70? You put this thing on a daily. Uh, man, just continued strength in pretty dramatic fashion over there on the end. We'll jump to gold. Gold right now up about $5. You take a look at gold on a longer term basis. This thing's just been chopping around between about 1750 and 2000 And you're talking about, folks, which is remarkable, almost two years that that's your trading range on gold. Now, you want to see a little bit of a even longer term time frame in terms of what you may be talking about here? Yeah, so potentially, right, you got an A leg of about 1,200. You got a B leg of about 2,100. B point, I should say, that's 900 points. You take that off the 1,700, that would be 2,600 potentially uh, where this consolidation goes. Remarkable dollar strength recently. When that does top out, when? Uh, not sure when, but when, it's not an if, eventually that will turn gold. We'll see how it reacts then because, man, the dollar strength really has been hampering gold. And even with that dollar strength, gold just still chopping around in this consolidation area. Excuse me, back to the short-term time frame. You can see the action this morning as gold jumps from 1825 to 1844. And we jump to notes and bonds. 
Uh, yeah, we have a flock to safety right now as you got the 10 year back to a yield of about 3.2%, I believe, this morning. Let's check it out. What's that right now? 3.16, just like that, as things continue to accelerate right now in the 10 year. You actually hit a 117 handle. We're trading right now up one point and three ticks from yesterday's action to 116.28. Uh, so yields easing a bit as a re possible recession looms in the near term. We will see. Okay, let's see what we got to talk about. So you have Chairman Powell in front of the Senate, I believe, today. And then he is in front of the House tomorrow. We have seven days left in the first half of the year. Remarkable. Is that seven trading days, I believe it is? What do we got? Yeah, we got three this week, counting today. We got four next week. And then July 1st next friday and we are off we got another long weekend which is nice the weekend of july 2nd 3rd and 4th on monday for july 4th you take a look at the numbers though markets down about 21 percent i believe the number is right now where are we at let's see poise for the worst first half since nixon yes it is there it is the index is down 21 percent since the beginning of the year amid expectations of a toxic mix of high inflation and the fed going to be ramping up those rates there's your action so far today and I wonder when this as of as of the June 21st close. Well, guess what? That number is getting uh, another 1.5 percent added to it or at least another 1 percent in terms of negative action on the open. So you're talking about a market down about 22 percent. You check it out first half of the year. That is the worst first half of the year that we've had since 1970. And it looks to beat that number, depending on how the uh, next this week and next week plays out. What I will say is that. It's kind of cherry picking six months, though, because, yes, the year end is December 31st. Obviously, people are calculating year end returns. Uh, that matters. That matters when you're talking about hedge funds, et cetera. But it's kind of an arbitrary point in time choosing to some degree. For instance, you go back to 1987 and you had the market up 25.5% for the first six half of the year. So not necessarily indicative of overall performance throughout the year, but nonetheless, we haven't had a number like this in a while. You go back to the recent numbers that we've had, take a guess what year they were. 2008, market was down 12.8%. 2002, market was down 13.8%. 2001, market was down 7.3%. Uh, 2010, 76 And you go back to 2020, it was down 4% for the first half of the year. Yeah, down 4%. I had to register that. Pretty interesting. Uh, this one barely sticks out, right? 2020, you have 4% decline. How about the volatility, though, on 2020? And let's just take a look, because that's kind of my point, right? You see a statistic like that. First worst six months uh, of the year since Nixon. And meanwhile, though, the year 2020 shows up as a 4% gain for six months. You start the year at 3,200, you make it to 3,400, you go to 2,174, and you make it back to barely within even uh, by July 1st. So not exactly indicative of overall market performance. It's quite a pullback. We're 21% down, and the market's going to kick things off, down about 1.4% to kick things off uh, for the with seven trading days left in the first half of the year. The VIX right now trading at 3,106. We spiked to 85.47 when the pandemic first began. You take that one spike out of the equation, and there are your spike since. 44.44 uh, was the spike after the initial. Since then, somewhere around 40 bucks. High 30s, low 41.16. Um, but as you see, those spikes, pretty much the high 40s. The recent one in May, 36.64. The most recent one in June, 35.05, currently sitting at about 31.06 markets, floating with about 3,700. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be coming back. We'll be talking to our man Kevin Hinks from Fast Market on the TD Ameritrade Network. Stay tuned. We'll be right back, folks. In a time of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in the Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve 
in a 16-year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&Ps negative by 56 points right now. That's an even 1.5% in the red. You get the NASDAQ 100 off 1.3%. We got the crude contract down $7, trading at 102.30 right now. Gold contract getting some action as well, up about 6 bucks. And that 10-year up a full point in three ticks. We got the 10-year yield now flirting with 3.16%. Let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hanks. Every trading day, folks, at 12 noon Eastern time, right here on Tiger TV, Fast Market, with your host, Kevin Hanks, Tom White, the team at TD, TD Ameritrade Network. They break down the day's market action, walk you through hypothetical trade setups, folks. If you ever want to learn about options and learn about defined risk trading, check out the program every day at noon Eastern time right here. Kevin Hanks, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. Suffering from a little whiplash this morning as uh, a big up day yesterday, followed by, uh, well, at least to start the day, a pretty substantial down day here, Tommy. So, uh, yeah, uh, th you know, this one, today's down day is an interesting one, though, because, you know, you hear me preach a lot about the U.S. dollar. The U.S. dollar is pretty flat this morning. It's crude oil and it's yields that are sharply lower, Tommy, but that's for a different reason. Another letter out today about the chances for a recession. And so remember what a recession does. It brings less demand for crude oil, and it brings in more demand for bonds as stocks become less attractive. So uh, bonds higher, yields lower, and crude oil sharply lower, now almost 7% down. Uh, that rings a whole different alarm to start the day, Tommy. It is interesting that we're seeing kind of that, I don't want to use the word normal, right, but that normal uh, relationship between fixed income and the market. We're finally getting, you know, you get a risk off day and you actually get a price rise in uh, the price of the yield. You get lower yield on that result. 
but that's how it's supposed to work for the worst, you know, most part of this year, Kevin, we've seen the price of yields decreasing. So we've seen yields rising dramatically as you've seen the market tanking. Um, that one's an especially tough one, especially for people out there in retirement, that 60, 40, 40 portfolio. Uh, that's been a really tough one. One of the worst starts to the year for that. And we got an S&P, Kevin, I didn't even realize, seven trading days left in the year, including today. We get three this week, we get four next week. And the S&P on pace for the worst start for six months since 1970, down 21%. And that was as of the close of yesterday. Uh, we had a lot of Fed speak. We have the chairman himself in front of, I believe, the Senate today and the House tomorrow. Uh, what are you looking for, if anything, out of Chairman Powell's? He, he, you know, just crazy action in the notes and the bonds and the yields and the market, just even off of their last meeting. You looking for anything or just the status quo from Chairman Powell today? Well, I, you know, besides Drew Powell, we've got Thomas Barkin speaking three times today, Charles Evans speaking, Patrick Harker speaking, so a lot of Fed speakers, and Tommy, one of them is going to make a headline saying <laughs> something, right? Someone will be quotable out of that group of speakers today. But, Tommy, I'm going to give your viewers something to think about. When you look at crude oil and what it's done the last couple days, right, guess what? That's going to show up in the inflation data. Right With the inflation data, the CPI data dominated by energy, this move down to basically $102, it's going to show up in inflation data. And that's going to start to dispel some of the problems that we fear about this economy. So uh, there is some positive to some of this movement. You've got yields going lower, which is will, by definition, make stocks more attractive. And that move in crude oil. Remember, the last couple of days, it's down probably $12, $13 over the last couple of days. Tommy, that's going to show up in CPI data. Yeah, it's a great point, man. I got a chart of light, sweet, crude up here on the Thinkorswim platform. And even on a daily basis, the last few days, yeah, down from, what, 116 to, to 112, just in the last almost two days. If you just go back eight days, so what day is that? Yeah, June 14th, so eight days, not even, and that's over a long weekend. We were up to 123. That's 21 dollars in eight days. Crew just pulled back to yeah. 10244. Pretty decisive break. Um, Remember that gets us what, back. What's that 18, 17, 18 percent? That's going to show right? up. In the I, I, and even and as a it'll consumer, show up at your pump. that's even as a consumer this morning, Kevin. Right? I said, oof, 102. I like 102. We're, we're talking about real money now. You know, I mean, gas is at 575. It drops 20 cents a gallon. I'm still going. Come on, you're kidding me, right? We got crude at 102. I actually mentally said, all right, maybe maybe we get, you know, a real pullback on those gas pipes. We should now from 123, man. Uh, we'll find out. Yeah, we already have some of the Tigers and Tigresses in the den, Kevin. They're talking about Harker, uh, some of his comments. Nothing too surprising. But uh, to your point, they're in there talking about it already. That'll be interesting to see that stream of flow of data today, especially for the chairman as well. With all of that, Kevin, not many companies out with earnings, but we have some companies moving. What are you guys taking a look at uh, at Fast Market coming up at 12 today? Well, because of the moon and crude oil, we're going to look at Chevron uh, in the first yes. segment. So we'll look at CVX. And then FedEx has earnings tomorrow. We're going to cover them today with Folio, And then Airbnb. We're going to see Ooh. what all these changes in flying and driving and gas prices have on Airbnb stock. That's I like uh, three great stocks, man. I've been taking a, a look at Airbnb myself. Quite the pullback, man. You were over 200 twice last year, 219.94, the high um, about a year ago. You trade well below their IPO levels, which is crazy. We're trading at 102.27. Uh, strong company, but I heard you guys talking about it before, man. Those fees really adding yeah. up. I ordered Uber Eats the other night, Kevin, and I found myself blown away by the fees um interesting we'll see those fees though they can add up on those on those uh, airbnbs uh in the long run they change the game though probably probably going to be a profitable company in a big way but man quite a pullback well kevin we appreciate you taking the time every day to talk to us we appreciate you taking the time for the education on fast market it should be a good one today man we'll be watching at 12 eastern time thanks for having me on tommy have a great day you too, Kevin. Take care. Folks, check it out every trading day right here on Tiger TV, the TD Ameritrade Network, Fast Market, Kevin Hanks, Tom White. They break down the day's market action. You heard the stocks they're going to be talking about, three great stocks. Uh, FedEx as well, right? Some real volatility recently, man. From 319 to under 200, maybe that's a little bit of a base. You almost make it back to the 618 of the run that it had from May 
which was a price level of 107 to 319. You're back to 230. Uh, you know, you could technically start that Fibonacci level at the exact lows. And let's see where that one lines up. Yeah, that would have put the 618 a little bit lower at 177. Nonetheless, quite a pullback, but FedEx catching a little bit of a pop. I'm going to jump around real quick to some of the FANG stocks as we come into the opening bell right now. You got Amazon going to drop about two bucks. Quite a pop yesterday. That's a weekly. Okay, let's put it back to a daily real quick. You see the action yesterday. We're going to open right back at 106, man. All these stocks basically at lows. Uh, yesterday gone. Remarkable how quickly the, the tides can change for basically no reason, folks. You know, you get two and a half, three percent up. You get one and a half percent down. Why? Just because the market is really struggling to price the value of equities right now with so many variables in flux. Microsoft shares, you're going to open down about three, four, almost four bucks on the open for Microsoft shares. You jump over to Google. Google going to open down about 40 bucks. Let's see how Tesla's trading this morning. Down about $10 flirting with that $700 price point. Um, Netflix this morning. Yeah, about 169, 170. You know, I had been talking about Roku a lot. Now, they are just super volatile. But keep your eye, man. Roku has been overperforming in this market. Look at even today, right? The market gives back all of yesterday's gains, okay? Something's going on in this stock, man. I talked about it. You back it up. Roku is overperforming on positive days, and they're not losing as much on negative days. You're only going to be down a buck fifty on Roku. Yesterday, you were up $8. You were up 10%. We'll take another look at this when we come back. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, the Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com.
Welcome back, folks. Jumping back to the S&Ps right now. You're looking at an S&P that's trading down 47 points. So you get a little bit of a lift coming into the opening bell. We'll put it on a five-minute basis. Let me take this Fibonacci number off there just for a little bit of clarity. There we go. Uh, so we do pop a little bit. From 845, you were trading at 3703. Right now, you're down 1.1%. You were down about 1.5%. NASDAQ catches the lift into the open, down just shy of 1%. Right now, the Dow off 1.2 and the Russell off 1.5. Take a look at Roku real quick. Uh, I've been talking about Roku in general because of basically the value market cap wise. We're sitting at $11.8 billion. They are the gatekeeper, folks, to streaming. And at some point, $11 billion, $8 billion, $7 billion, $5 billion, $15 billion, uh, they do offer value to maybe a company like Netflix. Okay, now we're in the gambling business. This is a gamble. You just traded from $490 down to $87. But look at the action this thing had, okay? I mean, look at the last four days, all right? You back it up to 614, Roku was trading at 75 bucks. We're 12 bucks above that level. We're 15% above that level of where the market was on 614. You take a look at the S&Ps, okay? And there's where it is on 614. The S&Ps actually below that price level. Over that time, okay, Roku's had a couple days of 8 to 12% gains. On the pullback, you have the S&P down a full percent. Usually, Roku is down like 6, 7, 8%. Roku on par with the S&P. Meanwhile, yesterday, okay, you had Roku trade from a price level of 82 and close out the session at 89. So what's that, 9% acceleration yesterday? You give back 1% so far today. Anyway, thought I'd mention it because at some point I think that, you know, just recently this run up folks on June 8th to 105 was speculation that Netflix was just even talking about or there were rumors around Netflix that they were talking about potentially going after Roku. That's where you saw a gap from 93 to 105 to about 100 the next day. You trade all the way down to 72 and you take a look at the last, what is that, five trading days were up from 72 bucks to 86. That is a 16% pop. That's a 20, 20% pop. Now, Nothing to say this thing can't go down to 72 or even lower, okay? But keeping in mind, on Roku, you're flat already, even with the action you had yesterday. All right, I'm going to jump around a little bit to housing. So let me pull this one up for a statistic for you. Where are we? Let's jump to housing before we get into that ETF market. Uh, I wanted to show this statistic. This is a tweet. Uh, this gentleman, Lance Lampert. He uh, works for Fortune Magazine reporting on the U.S. housing market, okay? Fortune Education, Fortune Analytics. Interesting statistics. 20 regional housing markets had the highest share of list price cuts in May of 2022. Undeniable what's going on in the housing market, folks, no matter where you're choosing, okay? This is the percentage of houses that had price cuts year over year, May of 2022, to May of 2021, uh, and you see the rise, okay? We're talking about all of them are between about 36 to 47. Now, these are the highest share of list price cuts, okay? Meaning that these are the highest numbers you could pick, but there's Tampa, man. A year ago, only about one in five houses on the market had a price cut. Now you're talking about 40%, almost, almost one in two is that number, right? Some of the hottest markets out there in this list. Yeah. Northport, Florida, pretty similar action, 24 to 40%. Cape Coral has been a hot action market, 17 to 37. Now, that is not indicative of a market crashing, okay? Maybe there's a little bit of panic there, but I think it's undeniable at this point, folks, that at some point there will be a real estate uh, at least pausing or slight pullback. I mean, it's tough. I see the numbers. They're looking for maybe a 10% appreciation this year, a 5% appreciation next year, next year, just some numbers out there. I mean, that would be remarkable following the acceleration we've had. In Tampa, folks, you have markets up 35% in a year, right? You have a house that's worth 300,000 and in the next year it's worth 400,000. If you just tell me that that house is gonna grow a 10% this year to 440 and then it's gonna grow 5% the next year to 460, I think that would be way above what expectations are if you get a 10% and then a 5% run after you get a 30 to 40% run in one year. Because that would mean your house over the course of three years goes from 300 to about 465. Okay? I mean, obviously, you should be happy that type of action. But be aware of the indicators going on in that real estate market. That's one of them that stuck out at me this morning. Uh, okay, talking about bearish bets and ETFs. Dominating the ETF market like 2008 all over again. Trading in inverse ETFs, 
is eclipsing activity in bullish leverage products by the widest margin since the financial crisis. You take a look at some of the numbers to get into here. And they talk about some of the favorites in the den there as well. The largest is the ProShares Ultra Short QQQ. SQQQ is their symbol, delivers three times the inverse performance of the tech heavy NASDAQ 100 index. Its assets hit an all time high of $4.1 billion last week. At the same time, the bullish leverage counterpart, that's the TQQQ, they're talking about that in the Tiger's Den as well, fell to the lowest level in more than a year. Uh, they're talking about a lack of conviction, and they're talking about, folks, uh, selling the rallies. Investors, they're not buying the dip, they're selling the rallies, they're using bearish ETFs to do so. You can see the sea change in sentiment. Uh, it used to be that they were buying the dip, folks, and we're seeing it play out right now. This article, let's see when this article was written. Uh, well, it was written this morning when they already sold the the, the bounce as well. But I was going to say, again, we open a market that they sell the bounce last night. Now, it's pretty remarkable <coughs> excuse me, that you sell the bounce when, folks, here's the market, okay? And can you see my chart right now? There's the bounce. And they're still selling the bounce, man. You just traded from 41.50 down to 36.39. You bounce... A pretty extreme number. You bounce. I mean, that one bar yesterday is a 120-point S&P bar. But to illustrate the pullback we've had, folks, that's a 120-point S&P bounce. And we just traded down almost 1,200 S&P points. And still, they're selling the bounce. A little bit worrisome for the economy. And for the markets, I should say. When they'll sell the bounce just that quickly, basically on nothing. All right, let's see what else we got pulled up here. Shopify, they tap Twitter to boost the merchant's social media reach. We are a Shopify company. It'd be interesting to see if this has any impact, though. It feels like they're reaching here. Uh, they're adding Twitter to the growing list of social media partners as it aims to help businesses reach buyers across a range of online platforms. The more business Shopify cust uh, customers, as in Shopify retail customers, their customers creating storefronts, the more business they do, the more business Shopify, of course, does. You jump over to Shopify. They're up 1.5% right now. There's a 15-minute action. They catch a bit on the open. They were negative with the market, but, man, you take a look at this stock long term, right? Well below where you came into the pandemic, which is remarkable when you think about our lives change forever, folks. We are buying more online. We're doing more online, okay? Maybe for the foreseeable future, you want to get out and do things in real life as well after being shut down. But you came into the pandemic at a price point of about 400 You traded up to 600 before the market sold off on that pandemic. And meanwhile, Shopify almost cut in half from where it was trading in February of 2020. Talk about not even capitalizing on any of the growth. They are almost cut in half from the 593 price point that they were trading at the week of February 10th, down from 1762, man. Uh, can't overstate the pullback. Let's just see. I mean, some point this thing will catch a bounce. A 382 gets you up to 859 bucks. I don't think it's going there anytime soon, but that just illustrates how big the move has been. All right, folks, stay tuned. You got the markets. S&P's down 32. NASDAQ 100 down 69. You got crude trading at 102. We're going to be coming back, talking to our man Teddy Kegstat. Talk a little bit of crude. We'll talk a little bit of Forex as well. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Technology around us is changing every day. 
With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps down about 31 points right now. That's 8 tenths percent in the red. You do get a little bit of a bounce on the open. We trade up just above 37.40. We're trading right now 37.36. Let's jump over to our man Teddy Kegstat, folks. We talk to Teddy every Wednesday at 40 past the hour here on the Morning Market Kickoff. You can reach Teddy every trading day at his website, forex-trading-unlock.com. Teddy Kegstat, we got the first real crude pullback going on today in the last few days, man. Good morning. Good morning, Tommy. Yeah, the markets are uh, pretty interesting with everything since what's happened since we had uh, talked last week. That's for sure. It's always a wild week, man. I, uh, you know, I had been looking for a little bit of a crude pullback at some degree. Um, but what do you think of the action of 102 right now? If we could kick it off, maybe with crude, um, maybe price levels you might be looking at in the in this futures. But uh, 102 right now, quite a pullback from 116 and 123, even eight days ago. Yeah, actually, it's quite a sell-off in a very short amount of time. So um, I I wouldn't read too much into this slide. I would think that this is probably where it's bottoming out. I don't, it may, we may see a little bit more pressure. Um, <clears throat> I don't think it's very sustainable in the long term. And uh, another thing that we are kind of noticing that I looked at is the divergence between gasoline futures and uh, oil futures. So gasoline is not breaking like crude oil is so you're not going to okay. see the pumps drop you know like sure. especially we've had a, a 22 dollars sell-off in just a, a period of like you know six days you know i mean the, the pumps have come back a little bit but they're not coming that much back you know yeah. so because if you look at gasoline futures they're not retrade they're they're definitely um hitting new lows too but not even not remotely as severely of a slide you know so i think you have to kind of watch how the gasoline futures work too if there's not follow through to the downside then i think crude's pretty much going to start to find a bottom and probably get a bounce you know so i think it's just an overzealous uh sell-off right now i mean the reality is is that we have supply issues demand i mean you have a lot of news driven stuff because all of a sudden the news and the fed is starting to talk about recession well we were talking about a recession coming to hit us already six seven months ago you know so that's just finally getting the news you know speak if you will so i think they're getting the market jitters from that one you know like buying bonds because of what's yeah. going on in the short run uh, but you're still coming off a brand new lower low in the treasury bond market you know so and uh the, the big thing is too is if we we would still need another like three handle rally to get above 130 138.03 that would take out the last swing lower swing high in the bonds 
we still have a little ways to go. You know, now with yeah. the, with the Fed speak, Fed chairman speaking today and tomorrow. Remember that last week he came up with follow through after the um the the, the initial uh, three point uh, three quarter point rate hike, saying that they're aggressively going after this. Well, unless he's going to st- all of a sudden change his tune and, and say like, oh, we're, well, you're not going to start cutting rates. What are you going to do is say you're going to stop raising rates to see how things now pan out? Well, that would be a big flip flop in your in your decision process, especially when he shocked the market saying, yeah, screw you. I'm going to re- keep raising really aggressively no matter what. So I don't think he can change his tone and if he does, that really gives us credibility. You know, it turns it to Swiss cheese, you know, as far as what's he going to do in the future, you know. So I think that right now, you know, interest rates, they're bouncing, you know. So it's 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 normal to come off of the low, you know, with profit taking, you know, especially with this volatility. Uh, so I wouldn't read too much into it, you know. And as far as with the dollar, too. We had a little bit of divergence. It's getting a little dicey. So remember last week when we talked, I told you how I, how I reversed. I, was, I got short the yen. The yes. U.S. dollar Swiss, what happened in the, in the two days since we spoke last week, that was such a drop, you know. And that came just down to where um, we had found support just a few weeks earlier, you know. So now I'm back on, that, on, the, uh, on the dollar rally mode. If you look at the dollar index, it's wedging, you know, whereas you've had some spiking, you know, a little strength and corrections in some of the other markets. The euro really hasn't bounced. The pound really hasn't bounced. You know, the major, the major move that you had really so far was in the U.S. dollar Swiss. You know, so I would key off of that one because, as as rates right now, right now they're buying the bonds. You know, it's the in vogue thing to do because of the news play. How long is the market going to support that? Market's going to do what the market's going to do. You know, so if it's if it's only a, a news driven rally going on right now. I would say that you're going to see the dollar start to rally again very soon because this is just a profit-taking move. It's not sustainable. Yeah, I mean, I had a chart. I was jumping through the charts as you were kind of jumping around there. And the 30-year, I mean, yeah, it's quite a bounce, right, in terms of from 131 on last Thursday to 135. But, man, I put this thing on a quick daily, and you were trading at 160 um, just over three months ago. So you trade down 30 full right. points in the 30-year. Just a remarkable move, man, um, in the bonds in the notes, of course. And yeah, jump into the yen real quick. So I want to get to this one. You referenced mm-hmm. it. Um, excuse me, let me just jump, jump onto the chart. Where sure. are we? Come on. Um, I'll stay, there we go. Uh, so yes, to get exactly where we were, which I want to pull up on Wednesday, you trading about 134 and change, 135 when we talked to you last week. You dive all the way down to 131.48 on Thursday. Um, mm-hmm. And now we've actually gotten just slightly back <laughs> above that level to 135.86. Um, yeah, new so, highs yesterday, yeah. And so you're looking for bearish action there and the yen continuing with that sell-off, even even with the bounce to, to kind of new recent highs, or where are you there? No, now, like, like I said, last week I reversed for the dollar, gears. Okay. And with that volatility in the Swiss, that made me, when it hit that, that one was so oversold, and then I reversed okay. gears again. So now I'm... Long U.S. dollar Swiss, long U.S. dollar yen. I'm long, I mean, which yesterday I got sque- I was on a short squeeze a little bit, and that's now I'm finally long the yen again. Um, I'm short. The, I mean, excuse me. <clears throat> I am uh, short the euro U.S. dollar, short the pound dollar, short okay. the Aussie U.S. dollar, short the New Zealand dollar U.S. dollar. So, you know, yeah, I'm riding. I'm looking right now for a dollar bounce. I think that as the di- the index is wedging because of the divergence that's happening, the profit taking moves. I mean. The Swiss was the one that was the most volatile, you know, but markets go yeah, out, but they move. come in, you know. So I think that if you look at how support held a few weeks ago, this was is another good support area. And if that is the case, we're going back to parity. Now, probably parity quickly with the U.S. dollar Swiss, especially if the interest rate market turns, you know. So I think you probably have another three basis handles in the bonds before you're going to run out of gas, you know, because that 138 level would be key. You know, so if that's if we can stretch it up there, I would say that probably tomorrow is when you're going to see after the Fed, uh, the chairman is uh, done squawking around and questioning that that's when all of a sudden you're going to see the trade come back and the dollar is going to swing back. Interest rates are going to start going up again. And that's going to definitely drive the other currencies down against the dollar. And where do you 
like let's say in this like the million dollar question of course so you're looking for what that'd be higher yields right you're going to get the bond to to trade lower in price uh mm -hmm. after maybe you get the rise to 138 um mm -hmm. so you see it challenging that 131 low and and going below that level where do you see Absolutely. like maybe that 10 year right because it's, it's it's a nice little pullback in terms of yield but we've risen so much we started the year off at 1.5 percent sure. we're we're sitting at 3.15 now in the 10 year. We were up to almost 3.5. Uh, we mm -hmm. got about 30 seconds well, on the 10 year, just because that's what people follow most. Sure. What are you looking for in like the next few months for the 10 year as we're at 3.15 right now? Uh, you want a number, so I'll give you that number right Or now. a range. I know. I want everything. Sure. Good. I want it all. <laughs> I know. I know. All right. For the 10 year, I see it trading down around 108 to 105 as far as the handle basis in the next couple of months, if not by the end of the summer. Perfect. 108 to 105. We're sitting right now at 117. We had been as low as 114. Yeah, higher yeah. rates are coming, man. Teddy, thank you so much for taking the nine minutes with us, man. We appreciate All the right. education as always. And we'll talk See to you, you next week, next man. Week. Thanks, Teddy. Take, Take care. care. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back to finish up the show. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. And just like that, they're buying the dip. We got the NASDAQ 100 blowing a positive territory. I'm not sure if Chairman Powell might be saying something right now. Let's see if we got any headlines because he is speaking right now before the Senate. Uh, and the move we just got, folks, is about 200 points in the NASDAQ 100 from where we were on the open growth stocks trading higher. You just got an acceleration in the S&Ps from 830 this morning. We're up. 
57 points. You're about to go green across the board. The Dow still negative by about 164. We get the Russell negative by 10. You jump over to crude. A little bit of a lift from the lows. 102.87 right now on crude. You get the gold contract up about $9 to 18.47. And we jump to notes and bonds. Still up a full point and six ticks right there on the 10-year. You're talking about a yield, 3.15%. The yield on the 10-year. Man, just remarkable the move in these markets. You got to have quick fingers, folks. The NASDAQ 100 now up 33 points. S&P's only negative by single digits. Uh, you're almost back to where you were the close yesterday. Whew. Let's jump around to some of the FANG stocks. Amazon just trades up $4, man. $4. That would, that would have been an $80 move pre-split. You can't help but think about it. It's so recent. Tesla shares up 2.2% on that acceleration. You jump over to the big dog, Apple. Apple just trades up almost $3 from where you were pre-market. You're sitting right now negative by just nine pennies for Apple shares, Microsoft. Look at these moves, man. Whew. NASDAQ 100 now up 34 points as we come in. Let's check out how the VIX is behaving right now. Under 30 for the VIX, the volatility index so far on the open. Uh, we'll jump to some of the other stocks. Yeah, look at Roku, man. Roku's up 4% on the move yesterday. You know, it's tough when you have an index, that, uh, an equity that trades from 74 to 92, right? You're already up 18 bucks from that low. Um, but keep your eye on Roku. You get another little pullback down to this area because it has been overperforming. Quite a market, folks, to say the least. All right, it's going to be an interesting one. you got Chairman Powell testifying. you got a lot of Fed speak going on today as well. Uh, stay tuned, folks. we got our man, Basil Chapman. He's coming up next. we got our man, Larry, live at 11, fast market at 12. You heard some of the equities they'll be talking about. FedEx, Airbnb, they'll be talking about there as well. I think they're going to take a look at crude. Uh, Steve Rhodes at 1 o'clock. Dave White at 2 o'clock. My dad, Tom O'Brien, 5, retail 4. NASDAQ 100, positive by 30. S&P's negative by 9. Stay tuned, folks. Basil's up next. Have a great Wednesday.